Hey everybody, uh, I've got a touch designer tutorial here today that I want to go through. Um, I think for uh, beginners and intermediate users of touch designer, as well as some seasoned experts uh, that have been using this for years, uh, not only for personal but for client work, I think this is a project that's extremely um, important to, to learn at some point or another. Uh, because, you know, once, once you are using touch designer um, a lot, this ends up being a network that you'll you'll need to just build and rebuild with slight little changes here and there. So just going through the basics of it. So um, so you have a good foundation for when you do encounter uh, needing to to build this uh, is, is something that I wanted to, to do today. Um, so uh, like I said, something you'll encounter not only for personal projects, but something that uh, on my last four client projects, at some point I had to recreate this network with just slight variations due to how common this is as a request. So uh, we're going to be building a uh, corn dog, and um, I'll just go through all of this with you. Uh, it's not terribly, um, it's not terribly difficult, uh, but it is just a little, you know, it's just a hassle to have to keep rebuilding and rebuilding. So you know, going through the process of actually making this corn dog. Uh, I think we'll put people in a, um, or put you in a position where, you know, when you encounter uh, this or a client, you know, requests, you know, we need this this corn dog uh, for this installation tomorrow, um, but we don't have anybody with the know-how. Uh, you'll be able to provide it. You'll be, um, you can be their go-to uh, at the very last minute. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and uh, just start up a new container. Um, and inside, we'll just call this CD, uh, sorry, CD Extreme. Okay, uh, CD for corn dog. So, um, there really isn't a ton to it, like I said, it's just, you know, it's just that you end up needing to do it so much that it becomes a hassle. So, uh, you know, saving this as a container and bringing it in later, um, you know, saving it out as a tox or putting it in, uh, putting it in your own little palette over there is something you'll want to think about. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let's actually start by making a render network. Our uh, corn dog render network. Drop down a render, a camera, a light so we can light the dog. And I'm actually going to um, pipe that render into a transform. And we're just going to set a background color for now. It's black. And on this null here, I'll turn the display flag on just so we have our render ready to go as we work through this. Cool. So let's send this tube into a null and let's send that null into a geocomp. There. So now we're getting a render of this tube and this tube is what's going to form the, uh, the, the um, foundation of our dog here. So if we just drop the radius down till it feels about right. You know, I think right around 0.33, something like that. Let's bring the height up just a little bit. It seems like a good dog to me. Um, you know, you can play around with size a little bit and we can change things after the fact if we would like. Um, now, the next thing that we need to do is we need this to be capped up on the top and the bottom. And we can do that with spheres. So we're gonna grab a couple sphere sops. Well, to start, we're just gonna grab one. And uh, let's send this into a merge here, just so we can add our sphere into the mix. Awesome. So now we can make sure that the top and bottom of our corn dog that we're adding move dynamically with the tube, which is the, the basis of our dog. So to do that, let's go ahead and uh, reference this radius here. Let's just drag that over to sphere and radius here. Let's put bind. Perfect. So now the sphere is always going to be the same radius as our tube here. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to move this. Oh, not move the tube. Don't want to move the tube. We need to move the center of our sphere. We want to move it up here, but we, we can actually do this uh, with some math pretty easily. So we want to take our height and then up here with the sphere on the center, we can just drop this as a reference and let's divide it by two. Perfect. So now we have the top. Let's add the bottom of our dog. And all we need to do is multiply that by negative one. There we go. So we're already, we're already uh, making plenty of progress here. 
no time at all. We're approaching um, what I'm what I would usually call CD territory or CDT. Um, so the next the thing that's going to get us um, to the next level in CDT is giving it a little shape because not all corn dogs are perfect. Um, you know, I've seen the rare, um, you know, nearly perfect dog with with no imperfections, but it's a rarity. And for um, for realism, you know, I think it's important to add these slight imperfections that most CDs will have. So um, we're gonna do that with a noise, which you saw I just dropped in here. Uh, by default, the noise sop has uh, some an expression on the transform. Just get rid of that. Then back on the noise tab, uh, the noise tab, we can just start playing around a little bit. And one thing you'll notice is that it's a little, it's a little too lumpy. So I'm actually gonna go back here to our spheres, up the detail. We can get real detailed with these. We uh, we'd like a detailed dog. DTD for our tube. Let's do the same thing. 100, 100. Cool. So this is a little too lumpy. Um, and you know what? Already, one thing I'm noticing is that, you know, if this is something that you're actually ending need, and you, that you end up needing to like work through with a client uh, behind you, uh, which, believe me, may happen. It's happened to me multiple times. You want to, you want to avoid the client saying, well, it just doesn't really look quite like I was envisioning while you're still in the middle of the process. So the way that I alleviate that, um, and uh, you know, I think would behoove all uh, uh, corn dog uh, touch builders um, is to just very quickly give it context. And the way that I do that is I have this image that I had gathered earlier. And what you want to do is just composite your corn dog over something that gives it context. Uh, so in this case, I'm using uh, just the country fair. Um, so I'm just gonna bring the opacity down a little bit. But you know, just because the country fair is somewhere where you may, you know, find a corn dog or see a corn dog, and giving this corn dog some context can just kind of smooth smooth it the whole process over, and you know. Anyway, uh, so with where we're at right now, uh, where what we were doing, we were in the middle of just dialing in this noise, so we can experiment with getting the perfect, uh, slightly irregular corn dog shape, and it really isn't all that difficult. So um, you know, I actually really like the way that this is one is looking right now. And once you have some parameters set here, uh, if you want to just copy these, I have uh, period set to 0.54 and the amplitude to 0.12, and that looks pretty good to me. And then you can also just play around with the seed here. Uh, what you want to avoid is this looking uh, fecal and um, looking more like just a slightly irregular corn dog. Granted, uh, any fecal resemblance uh, will be removed when we apply materials. So don't you worry about that. So this is looking, uh, this is looking okay. Um, to be honest, I liked uh, this initial seed. This looks good to me. I'll maybe dial out the amplitude a little bit. Perfect. So just slight imperfections. And now we're getting much closer to where we want to be. So next, let's give it that material. We want this to look like a corn dog because right now it's just a, a gray blob. So let's drop down a noise top and uh, let's send it into a lookup. And then let's send that lookup into a null. And then let's drop down a ramp and feed it into our lookup. Cool. So that's the first part of our material. Next, let's use a PBR. Drop that down. And let's, um, you don't, actually, you know, PBR is a little intense for this dog. Let's just use a fawn. So you don't have to. Uh, I like sending everything into a null before I use it. So let's just uh, drop that null onto our geo as the material. And let's drop this null onto the fawn as the color map. Perfect. So we're already applying this material. But obviously, this is not quite the corn dog we want. This is a, a bit of a spooky dog here. Um, right there, that's more of a Halloween dog. Uh, don't typically need that. Um, if you do need to make a Halloween dog, 
Um, you know, play around with orange and black, but uh, I, I honestly would, would tend to avoid anything that necessitates that just because it can get a little, it can get a little iffy um, uh, trying to, to work with uh, Halloween dogs in general. I'm not gonna get into it. Um, so anyway, um, we at least have some colors here. Let's, uh, let me add, uh, there we go. This seems like a good color palette. So right now it's looking a bit like, um, like, uh, uh, like marbled cheese. So what we want to do is just dial down the period here on our noise and already that's looking pretty good. That's a pretty good dog right there. So maybe darken that a little bit. Let me get this a little darker as well. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, one big issue that I have right now is that uh, we're seeing this light reflection. Corn dogs uh, are not reflective, so we're gonna just pull out specular on our material and bam. What do you know? We have a corn dog here. The one thing that we're missing is the stick. And we're just gonna copy our tube here. We're gonna send that into another geo. And this tube is just gonna be off center, much smaller, right around there. I'm actually gonna take this camera and zoom out a little bit. Maybe pan up, there we go. Back to our other tube here. That looks pretty good. Then we just wanna send that into a transform um, and scale down the Z a little bit so that it's more like a, like a popsicle stick rather than a tube. And then, uh, last but not least, um, let's copy this Fong and Null, and let's give this Geo, this uh, stick here, its own material. Fantastic. And then we can kind of play with it a little bit. Um, why don't we say, uh, what do we want to do here? You know, we can actually just kind of color it ourselves here. But basically, um, yeah, I'll just get rid of this color map. There, that's close enough to a popsicle stick. There, so this is our, our basic corn dog network. And then if you if you really need to um, kind of show off the dog in a bit a bit more detail, right now it's fairly static. Um, there are there are other ways to do this. We could spin the camera around, uh, but just for the sake of time, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the dog by 15 degrees here on this axis. And then I'm gonna type in abs time dot seconds times 15, which is gonna get it rotating. And then I'm just going to drag the entire rotate down to the stick as well and bind it. So those are now rotating together. Awesome. So, um, there are a few things to dial in here. I didn't do anything with this comp uh, so that kind of scaled things a little oddly. Um, so why don't we say keep input uh, two? That's fine. Uh, let's make our render. Um, if you are using uh, commercial touch designer, you can you know get whatever resolution you need. Um, for the most part, I would honestly suggest sticking with 4K when it comes to corn dogs. Um, yeah. So I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, this is again something that I think you may encounter multiple times, especially when you start really, um, you know, digging deeper into Touch Designer. Um, it's just one of those things that ends up being. Um, sort of necessary as like a you know a stepping stone to to uh, larger projects and you'll you'll find yourself recreating um, this network over and over so you know something like this uh, save the container call it whatever you'd like again CD extreme is just what I would recommend um, and then stick it stick it over here and um, you can have a my components place uh, so you can put it over here um, cool so yeah, if you if you like this video, please stick around. I'll be doing more extremely useful touch designer tutorials. Um, and uh, if if this happens to make it to anybody from Derivative, um, you know, corn dog, corn dog uh, in the palette, maybe in the future, uh, 
to be honest, I think it would just be helpful for for everybody to have easy access to this. Um, the only thing that we didn't really talk about is lighting because we can get a little more interesting with it. Um, but you know, for now, this corn dog is lit. Um, but you know, we can we can get more moody. Um, you know, sometimes you know, depending on uh, if there's like a musical context. Uh, that the the dog is being shown with you may want you know um, you know a softer uh, softer dimmer light or some uh, to be to be lit from the bottom or or even to you know have the light kind of moving around on the dog um, you can get really complex when it comes to to lighting the dog um, may want to slow that down a little bit but So here's here's just an example of a very quick moody dog, um, um, but yeah. Uh, again, thank you for checking out this tutorial. If you found it useful, um, uh, you know, just let me know if you'd like to see any other uh, country fair foods. Uh, you know, I'd be open to tutorials on that. Um, yeah, thank you uh, very much. Hope you uh, hope you learned something useful here today.